With example three, we are told that Curtis wants to get in shape for an upcoming reunion, so he decides to take up running. But on his first run, he find he's more out of he finds he's more out of shape than he thought, and has to alternate between running, jogging, and walking. Sketch a qualitative graph representing the distance Curtis traveled over the time of his first run. Now, again, the actual shape of this from start to finish, there's a lot of leeway uh, as long as it makes sense. What makes most sense is that chances are when he first starts out, he's going to be running. So it's going to be a steep increase. And then he starts to get a little tired. So he's going to slow down a little bit. So it's going to be a little less steep. And then he's going to walk. And then maybe he starts running again, and then he gets tired again, and it decreases until he's just walking again. And then he gets a burst of energy, and he starts running, and then he gets tired again, and he slows down. He starts jogging, and then he starts walking, and he's just plain tired at this point. It's never going to decrease, but let's just say he's walking. Here he takes a rest, and he stops and then he starts walking again. Now, the key is he's going to start off running, and then it's going to slow to a jog, and then a walk. Then when he rests up, he's going to start running again, and then a jog again. Then he starts running again, and then he's walking. Here at this flat stop, he's resting. And then he starts walking again. And again, the, the exact shape is going to be, uh, there's got to be a lot, a lot of variance. Uh, the, the key is that he starts off running, so it's going to be steep. And then each time he starts jogging, it's going to be less steep. And then walking, it's going to be even less steep. And then, you know, at one point up here, it doesn't go down, but it's flat. And that means time is increasing, but his distance is not, which means he's resting.